This week on Vegas Nation Blitz, Raiders owner Mark Davis is not happy with a recent league decision. Raiders wide receiver Rico Gafford trades in his football helmet for a chef's hat, and the Raiders remember to include their Oakland roots in the team's new headquarters in Henderson. All of that and more coming up on Vegas Nation Blitz. Excited to know where we're going to be playing and excited to have a, a, a city that, that, that is excited about having us. We are now the Las Vegas Raiders. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm Cassie Soto. Back on June 25th, a 31 to 1 decision was made by NFL owners to tarp off the first eight rows of seats in all NFL stadiums this upcoming season. Well, that one dissenting vote came from none other than Las Vegas Raiders owner Mark Davis. So here to tell us some more about that is our very own Raiders beat writer for the Las Vegas Review Journal, Vinny Bonsignor. Vinny, Mark Davis. Davis is not happy that he will have to tarp off any portion of his brand new Allegiant Stadium. Uh, what do we know about this? Can you tell us some more? Yeah, and it, and it wasn't just that. They didn't vote just for that on the same vote. It was it was a, an all or nothing vote. Um, but they also uh, allowed teams, um, gave teams the right to go ahead and then turn around and sell those tarped off areas for advertising to create some, you know, uh, money revenue. And that was what really made him mad because he's like, okay, so we're going to tell 3,500 fans, sorry, but you can't go to the games. We kind of get it. It's the pandemic and, you know, they're trying to create that buffer zone. But when you watch the games on TV, uh, you're going to see advertising where your seats were. And that doesn't sit well with Mark. And to add another layer to it, if you're talking about, at a, you know, Allegiant Stadium, He's completely sold out at that stadium. So even if the governor of Nevada says, you know, you can you can have as many fans in the stadium as you want. If that buffer zone is in play, then he has no place to put those 3,500 other fans because every other ticket is literally sold. So uh, he's between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, well, in your article, you, of course, mentioned displacing those fans. But you also mentioned that Mark Davis kind of said it's all or nothing really for him. Can you tell us more about that and why he feels like if he can't have 3,500 fans there that at this point maybe just don't have any fans at all? Is that maybe a, a consideration that the NFL is thinking given the times that we're in? I mean, this virus is spiking in some places. Could that be a possibility that, that maybe teams have to consider? Well, I think for each team, it's going to be up to each team. And that's another issue here is because as of right now, each team's attendance is going to be based on every team's it, it's going to be your team you you get to decide how many fans you have in your stadium oh by the way that's up to the state city and county that you're operating in so mark told me if it gets to a point and by the way he's going to totally adhere and respect whatever governor sisalak has to say they have a good relationship if sisalak says mark uh you can only have twenty five thousand fans at allegiance stadium that's what our medical experts are recommending mark told me if that happens then i have a big decision to make and i'm like well okay well what would your decision be his thing is hey if i can't have 100 percent fans here maybe the most maybe the fairest thing to do is to have no fans here because i don't want to tell one fan let alone thousands of fans after they've shown so much excitement so much passion so much backing they bought season tickets they they bought a uh, personal seat license all of which goes toward construction of the stadium so so in, in a lot of ways all these fans are going to be at these games help pay for the stadium he doesn't think it's fair that he has to tell one or 35,000 fans or however many hey i'm sorry but you just can't go because that's what the recommendation is from the state and to tell one fan that He's 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 not really you know uh, uh, happy about or not happy about that. He just feels it's unfair. So maybe the most fair thing to do is no fans can come, all or none. He hasn't gotten to that point yet, but it sure seems like he's at least thinking about that. Well, it'll definitely be weird to see a brand new stadium with no black hole fans there, Vinny. Thank you so much for the update. You got it. Take care. Have a great day. 
In other NFL news, the league told team owners Thursday that it is forging ahead with the plans to start training camps on time and play a full schedule that includes some fan participation. Meanwhile, former Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton signed a one-year deal on Sunday with the New England Patriots. The Panthers released Newton in March after nine seasons. And former Raiders head coach Joe Bugle died Sunday at the age of 80. Bugle coached in the NFL for 32 seasons and was the architect of Washington's famous Hogs offensive line. For a Raiders social media update, let's go ahead and bring in social media manager for the Las Vegas Review Journal, Adrian Iadarko. Adrian, we knew that when the Raiders drafted Lynn Bowden Jr. that they were going to get a dynamic playmaker, but now we're seeing some highlights of this guy that further proved that, aren't we? Yeah, so the Raiders had a really good offseason, got some really good free agents, a solid draft. And, you know, one of those guys, like you said, is Lim Bowden Jr. And he's one of those guys going to do a little bit of everything. Um, the Raiders posted this highlight video and he's taking punts back to the house. He's catching deep balls for touchdowns. He's even lining up at quarterback and scoring touchdowns. So, like I said, this is a guy you can put almost anywhere in that Raiders offense. So it should be really exciting to see how the Raiders use him this season. Well, I'm sure fans can't wait to see him get out there and get to work. And when he does finally get the chance to step on a practice field, it'll be at that Raiders brand new headquarters in Henderson, Nevada. What's the latest there? Yeah, so the Raiders posted some brand new drone footage of that brand new facility. And it's really cool. You can see the practice field. You can see even a pool outside. Uh, so it's very impressive. And they use the caption, home sweet home. And sweet it is. Um, so with this facility in Allegiant Stadium, the Raiders have to be in the conversation for best stadium and best facility in the league. All right. All right. Well, we can't wait to get out there ourselves, get some video of these guys finally training. Uh, Adrian, thank you so much. Well, fans, be sure to stick around after the break because I will be speaking with Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Rico Gafford about his newest endeavor. Stay with us. When did the Raiders play their first overtime game? Was it A, 1965, B, 1975, C, 1985, or D, 1995? Stay with us for the answer. Welcome back to Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm your host, Cassie Soto. Well, if you ever find yourself in Des Moines, Iowa, there is one sports bar that you have to check out, and that is Rico's at Drake. And that, of course, is owned by none other than Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Rico Gafford. And he joins me now to tell us about his newest endeavor. Rico, thank you so much for taking some time. No problem. <clears throat> Uh, well, I want to start with, of course, your newest endeavor. It is the newest sports bar on the campus of Drake University. Tell me how this all got started. What made you want to get into the restaurant industry? Um, to be completely honest with you, uh, uh, for the last, I'd say, year and a half, um, my dad and I have been brainstorming a lot of things we can do to um, invest our money together to, uh, you know, do something that we wanted to do together. Uh, we started off by saying we wanted to do real estate. We want to go in. Um, fix houses up, resell them, you know, do, do, do that type of thing. And then um, when I came home from this uh, previous season, um, we started talking about that again, but um, he, he owns businesses already. So um, he has a business partner and something that they were talking about was bars, was restaurants, something like that. So um, because he and I were talking about doing our own thing, he wanted to bring me in on his, with, with his team. I give them the credit for, you know, you know introducing me to the bar scene and, um, getting me on board to do this. Given the times that we're in, Rico, it's probably understandable if you guys would have pushed back the grand opening date, but you went ahead and did it. What made you want to still continue to open during the pandemic that we're in right now? Um, we honestly didn't want to open at all. Um, we, we started to rent the place out right before COVID happened. Um, we waited. We, once, once everything started to open back up, here in Des Moines, Iowa, uh, we still waited at least three weeks. We didn't want to, you know, jump right into the scene and numbers started to spike and numbers spiked anyways, but we didn't want to be the reason why it spiked. So um, we waited a little while. Um, we continued to, you know, do what we can as far as disinfecting everything. And we weren't even open yet. We just wanted to, you know, make sure that when we were open, we had everything in place to where, you know, we could, we could 
react, we could prevent, we could, you know, just, just do a lot to where we don't have to worry about COVID reaching our spot. So another thing we're doing as well as we're doing carry out, we're doing takeout, we're doing uh, Uber Eats, we're doing DoorDash, we're doing all those, all that type of stuff as well, just because we want to be able to, you know, keep our bar open, but we mainly sell food. So it's more like, it's, it's, it's mainly like a, a restaurant. So we want to be able to have, you know, the community support us and, you know, be able to eat our food. All right. Well, let's get into it now. Tell us about the food. What are some of the community's favorite items? What's your personal favorite item? And what have you taste tested everything that's on the menu? Um, the food right now, I'd say the best thing on the menu for me is the fried uh, catfish with shrimp and uh, fries. Um, we, you know, we, we're doing very, very well with our, our wings. Everyone loves wings. So we have a lot of different wings. This week, we're actually adding um, more to the menu as far as wings and uh, the, the different type of styles and flavors you can have with that. So um, we feel like we're doing pretty good with our, our wings, catfish, our burgers are really good. We just recently added egg rolls to the list and the egg rolls are really, really good as well. And we get those homemade by some, some very, very good chefs. So um, I'd say overall, pretty much everything on our, on our menu right now is doing, is doing its thing right now. Well, that's awesome, Rico. Well, let's just touch on the football side of things real quick while I have you. I know in college you played cornerback. You had a pretty successful career as cornerback. Well, now we look at the things for Raiders, uh, Henry Ruggs III being an addition, Brian Edwards, Nelson Aguilar. That wide receiver room getting a little cramped. Has there been any talks of maybe moving you back to that cornerback position, and would you be uh, up for that? There has honestly, there has not been any type of talks. Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, if they if they wanted to do that, they would have probably already done that by now. So I feel like they're um, satisfied with my play at receiver. Um, you know, we it, it, the, with with a lot of new faces in the room, uh, we honestly don't know which way it's going to go. But um, as of right now, we all love each other. We you know we've worked out together. We've been in Vegas together. We you know we've we've been around each other, and we're all a brotherhood. So. Um, when it comes to that, like we, we, we don't honestly, like I said, we don't know what's going to happen, but as of right now, we're, you know, we're working out, we're, we're um, in meetings and all that type of stuff as if we're all going to be one team. And we, you know how that goes. You know, a lot of guys get cut, a lot of guys go elsewhere, but as of right now, we're all on the same team and we're all pushing for the same goal. So um, that's just the way it's going to be until we figure out what's, what's next. Final one for you here, Rico. Uh, news recently came out that the NFL went ahead and said that all eight rows, the first eight rows in all NFL stadiums will need to be tarped off this upcoming season. One, to protect players, you guys out there on the field. And two, for teams to be able to sell ad revenue on those tarps. Well, your team owner, Mark Davis, was incredibly opposed to this. He says it takes out seats for the black hole members. We know how important those guys are. For 100%. you, what are your thoughts on that? And how weird would that be stepping out on the field and having those first eight rows tarped off? Uh, I mean, honestly, like for, for the black hole like that, you know, that's an issue for, you know, our fans and all that because they want to be up close and personal to us. And, you know, if after we score a touchdown, after, you know, even before the game, we like to interact with them. We like to go over and say what's up to them and, you know, just, just be there for them. So um, with that, we won't be able to do that. But it also, I guess it also is, you know, in place to protect us as far as, you know, how close we are to them. So I'm, I'm on, I'm up in the air for both, honestly. I, you know, it's, it has, I, I have no say so in it at the end of the day, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, it, it hurts the fans because they want to be up close and personal to us. But then again, it also, you know, sets boundaries for us just in case, you know, we are able to play in front of fans. All right, Rico. Well, thank you so much for taking some time and best of luck to you and your new restaurant this year. Thank you. Once again, that was Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Rico Gafford. Raiders fans, if you have any questions that you would like to have answered right here on Vegas Nation Blitz, hit us up on Facebook or Twitter at Vegas Nation. And if your ears need more to hear about Las Vegas's newest team, Vegas Nation now offers three podcasts a week. New episodes drop on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Check them out at ReviewJournal.com, VegasNation.com, or wherever you hear your podcasts. We'll be right back. The answer is B, 1975. George Blanda kicked a 27-yard field goal in overtime to seal a 26-23 win over the Washington Redskins. 
Welcome back to the Vegas Nation Blitz. I'm your Vegas Nation podcast host, Heidi Fang, and I'm joined with our NFL writer, Adam Hill. We're going to talk a little bit here about what's going on in the NFL right now as over about 180 rookies right now remain unsigned. And Adam, why is that? <laughs> So, you know, it's very complicated this offseason. We've seen that with a lot of different transactions that they've had. And it just is a matter of not being able to get guys in the building and get physicals and, and go through that process and get them signed. Nobody's really worried about a whole bunch of unsigned players coming up around training camp as far as the rookies go. Everybody kind of knows what they're going to make. We've had the rookie slots for a while now. So there's really no, it's not like some thing of like, well, these guys are doing a mass holdout or something like that. I've seen a lot of speculation like that around Twitter. Like, no, no, this is just, hey, logistically, can't get in the facilities. Uh, right before training camp, you're going to see a lot of these guys finally get in the building, finally get physicals, finally uh, get to meet and greet everybody, and then just sign their deals. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of uh, holdouts for these rookies around time to come. They'll just show up for training camp, and they'll get it done. And uh, I think the Raiders right now, all seven guys are still unsigned. Uh, people are looking at that, hey, maybe it's because they're moving. They moved from Alameda. They're moving to the facility here. It just opened last week. But no, it's just like the rest of the league. Uh, they need to wait to get these guys in. Haven't been able to do that yet. And there you have a lot of unsigned guys. Right. Right now we're seeing an uptick with cases in the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. And I wanted to get your take on how much longer this could possibly take, being that we're seeing that rise in several states right now. Will it take even longer than anticipated to get these guys signed or will it have to be at a certain point? Yeah, I mean, eventually they're going to have to do it. It'll be right before they go into training camp now. The question is, will training camps be pushed back? Because right now we're looking right around July 28th for everybody to come in. You might want to be able to give it, get everybody in there like the 26th, 27th, even right up to the last minute, finally get them into the building. But if training camp is pushed back, which is a possibility at this point, we've already seen the Hall of Fame game pushed back. Uh, if training camp is pushed back at all, then this process will be pushed back as well. But training camp is really the timeline for all these guys to get signed. Thanks, Adam, as always. Appreciate all the insight. And right now, I'd like to ask everybody to stay tuned for a moment here in Raiders history as we look back on the various training camp sites that the Raiders have had throughout time. The Raiders' first training camp took place July 10, 1960 in Santa Cruz, California at the Santa Cruz High School. From 1963 to 1984, the Raiders had a location like no other, a motel called El Rancho Tropicana in Santa Rosa, California, which is now the site of Costco gas pumps. While many teams stayed on college campuses, the Raiders, who practiced in full pads twice a day, would unwind and party in the city of Santa Rosa. In 1985, the Raiders moved their training camp to Oxnard, California. City officials lured Al Davis' team close Closer to LA, under the terms that Davis would pay one whole dollar each year in rent, the city agreed to finance the construction and co sign loans to build the site for the Raiders. When the Raiders went back to Oakland in 1995, the training camp went back to Northern California as well. This time they'd set up in Napa at Redwood Middle School. Though the team had planned to return to that site for their 2020 training camp, that plan was altered by the coronavirus pandemic, forcing all NFL teams to set up camp at their home facility. For the Raiders, that will now be the city of Henderson and it will also be the first time in 25 years that their training camp will happen in a new city. That'll do it for this moment in Raiders history. We'll be back next week. The Road Ahead, sponsored by Capriotis, now slicing extraordinary. Welcome back to Vegas Nation Blitz, where we bring you the latest news and information regarding the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm your host, Cassie Soto, joined by Las Vegas Review Journal Allegiant Stadium insider Mick Akers. Mick, the Raiders recently released some drone video showing the team's new, brand new headquarters in Henderson, Nevada. But one thing that we can't see in that video, Mick, is something pretty special that the team brought with them from Oakland. Yeah, so they, you know, bring up a little bit of their past, you know, the mixing with their future. They brought in the Al Davis Memorial Torch from the Oakland Alameda Coliseum uh, right there in the front where you pull in, uh, right in the Porta Cachera where you, you know, pull up to the front door. So, you know, they have it in there out there. It's kind of, you know, a, you know, I mean, it's figure there a lot of people have lit that thing up over the years. First person, John Madden, of course, legendary Raiders coach. And the last person was Charles Wilson, you know, one of their future Hall of Famers. So, you know, go down the line, you know, of who's who of the Raiders Nation has lit that thing up. So, it's you know, it's cool to have it sitting out front here in southern Nevada, you know, bringing in their, you know, their new home here. 
Well, sticking with the Henderson facility, Mick, we do know that there's a few finishing touches that crews need to complete on the exterior of this building, but the interior looks like the team is moving in. They're getting that Raiders logo everywhere they can. Yeah, so the recent pictures have shown they're moving into the Performance Center. It's uh, 50,000 square feet right next to the indoor field house, uh, putting all the gym equipment, all the barbells. I'm showing you know, up to 130 pounds. So they're putting in some heavy work once they get inside there, obviously. Um, a lot of Raiders logos, you know, it's nice with the black and silver, obviously, with the accents around. Fits right in. So, you know, showing all the equipment, helmets, um, jerseys going in. So, you know, it's starting to get a little bit more real. Hey, it's almost time to get these players in here, you know, put them to work. Well, as far as Allegiant Stadium goes, Mick, I saw on Twitter one of the main builders post that the construction crew was in the two-minute warning. It is go time now. They, they don't have much time left to get this thing done. Can you give us the latest from uh, Allegiant Stadium? Yeah, you mentioned you know, this two-minute warning, no timeouts, you know, no commercial breaks. So obviously they're uh, you know, entering this last, last month of uh, construction here. Um, inside, a lot of finishing touches going in around the suite areas, the club areas. Um, they said they have the locker rooms both for UNLV and the Raiders done. Uh, trying to get a peek at those whenever we can. Um, obviously, a lot of interest in those. I think that's like the number one request from fans is say, hey, can we see these locker rooms? Uh, so hopefully one of these days we'll get the, you know, that peek inside there. Um, obviously, we've seen the, the video boards going in last week. Um, a lot of testing on that. Uh, in, outside the stadium, um, they're just going around finishing the media mesh. It's, I would say right now it's about 20% done. They have a nice strip that goes up and down the entire middle, and now they're kind of expanding out to the side. Awesome, Mick. Well, thank you, as always, for the updates. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again for joining us for another week of Vegas Nation Blitz. If you're looking for more Raiders coverage, head on over to VegasNation.com or download that free Vegas Nation apps where you can read stories, watch videos, and listen to our Vegas Nation podcasts. For our Vegas Nation crew, I'm Cassie Soto. We'll see you next week.